Hi everyone, thanks for joining this afternoon's um, extended essay moderation session. So um, guys, obviously things look a little bit different this year. Usually we would be in a room together and then breaking off into faculties. Obviously we're social distancing and some of us are online. So things will look a little bit different, but hopefully still remain um, quite consistent um, amongst our faculties. So we're gonna work in faculty teams again today. Um, guys, the aim for this session really is just for us to establish, again, consistency in our marking and also a mutual understanding of um, the extended essay criteria, but also the requirements of um, the subject-specific guide as well. So it's a good opportunity for you to be able to um, discuss with your colleagues, as we always do, engage in some, engage in some critical discussion. Um, and if you're new to the extended essay as well, it's nice to see how this is done, basically. Um, so team, things to look out for today um, when you're given a sample to mark. Ordinarily, we would swap uh, one of our students with another team member. Today, things are looking a little bit different. So we're all actually going to mark the same uh, extended essay sample. So when you are marking um, this extended essay, and I'll go through how we're gonna run things this afternoon in a moment, but major things um, that we need to really, really be on the radar for are number one, or number one is how well is the student actually addressing um, the subject's guide uh, or the subject report because the subject report is really um, just a summary of that. So how well is the student actually addressing those requirements? Are they meeting the expectations of an extended essay in your subject area? Um, this is on us as supervisors to be across. Yes, the students have read the subject guide, but we cannot expect them to uh, be responsible for that and to remember all of that. So it's, it's up to us to make sure that we are really clear um, on the expectations of the particular subject. Um, it is the difference sometimes between a student getting an A and a C or a D and a C, um, and it's just making sure that they're ticking the boxes really um, for their extended essay. So um, you'll have some time this afternoon just to quickly um, refresh yourself and have a look at the subject report. It's not as long as the subject guide. Many of you have read it before. It's about two pages. And it's just great to have a look at some of the do's and don'ts for your particular subject area. And that comes straight from the IB for all schools. Um, so you'll have access to that just to refresh your memory. I know a few of you have already done that before, um, but it's good just to make sure that that's fresh in your mind as you go into marking. Um, the next thing, guys, that we need to make sure that we're across is um, referencing. So is the student actually accurately and consistently referencing the entire way through their essay? Please, if you can make sure that they're using APA referencing, that's the, our AIS uniform approach with referencing. Um, so it's, it's APA, APA referencing, um, but they should be referencing consistently throughout the whole essay. And I guess the tell signs of that, as you would know if you've done one of these before, is if you've got a student who's written two beautiful pages that sound like poetry with absolutely no referencing, um, that's an alarm bell there. And we need to make sure we jump on that now as opposed to down the track when we're looking at their Viva, uh, when they're doing their Viva Voce and we're looking at their final extended essay. Um, on that as well, if you have a student or if your student is making claims and huge generalizations but not actually saying where these claims or where this information came from, that's almost just as bad. So please make sure that you um, pick up on this, be as strict as you can with it, because we can only make sure that these kids are really prepped um, and protected from plagiarism um, to the best of our knowledge. The other thing that we need to make sure we're having a look at, guys, criteria C is often where kids do um, the most poorly or score the most poorly, so critical thinking. Ask yourself as you're marking, is there any critical analysis being offered here? Or is this student merely just describing and describing and describing and not giving us any investigation and not actually engaging with the sources that they've used in there? So have a look at the language of criteria C. It's very specific. Um, and quite often, if they don't do well in their critical analysis, that will then um, have a domino effect on the other two, or criteria A and criteria B and C, have quite a domino effect on, on the other. So if a student does badly in criteria A with their focus and method, nine times out of 10, that's then going to impact how well they do in the, in the um, following criteria after that. So is there actually any critical analysis being offered? Then with criteria D, guys, which is presentation, simple, easy ways for our kids to um, increase and bump up their mark. 
really simple stuff that we can look for, title page, table of contents, consistent referencing, um, size 12 font, Times New Roman or Arial, sorry, some size 12, uh, yeah, font, Arial or Times New Roman um, as well in terms of font style. And then bibliography, are they actually labelling all of their graphs, all of their um, figures? Is there an appendix if need be? And is it correctly, correctly um, implemented into the essay? So those sorts of things are easy, easy ways for our kids to increase their marks. Lastly, criteria E is going to be a bit tricky and it always is when we do our drafts um, because our students haven't actually completed all three mandatory reflections, you'll find that this student only has one reflection completed at this point, which is fine, um, but that means that you can't give them full marks for criteria E. So just have that in the back of your head. What you can do is judge the quality of that reflection, that sole reflection, um, but there's no way that they can achieve full marks for criteria E. I'll also just remind you of where to look for that reflection as well. Guys, um, so in your faculty teams this afternoon, it's gonna be pretty simple. You just need to flick forward um, in the slides to your relevant faculty slide. In each slide um, and for each subject area, you'll have your subject report there, access for you there. The sample extended essay that you're going to mark, it is an existing student from our school, so it will be one of your students possibly. Um, a link to the extended essay criteria, all right. And the most important thing is the moderation form. So everyone's gonna do this first part individually, reading the subject report, then reading the student's essay, and then actually marking the student's essay and providing a predicted grade. Um, I am going to ask that you use the grade boundaries as well, and that's on the moderation form that I'll show you in a moment, just making sure that you convert the score into an A to E grade. So on the moderation form, guys, um, it's pretty much the same that we use every single year. So once you've had a read of the essay, and once you have um, gone through the extended essay criteria, and I encourage you to do this one piece at a time or one section at a time once you've read the essay, Please give a, a mark, obviously, out of uh, six or out of 12 or out of four, and also give a justification for why you've actually given them four out of six for focus and method. So what is there in the essay? Remember, the IB always looks for what's there first and then what's actually missing. Please pay attention as well um, to the language in the uh, mark bend. So whatever the descriptor says, whether it's adequate or good, we need to be able to justify which parts of the essay are good or only adequate or unsatisfactory, for example. So use the language rather than just saying, oh, I think this feels like a four. Look for the descriptions um, that are there for you in each criterion. Um, once you've done that for each area of the criteria, guys, at the bottom here, you just need to put in a score out of 34. So adding up each of your criteria marks out of 34, and then you've got the grade boundaries here as well. So if you've given the child 21, um, that would mean that they're a B. So you just need to make sure that you've highlighted which grade you would give. Um, after this, guys, it's really room for you guys to be able to do some, some group discussion and, and just... Um, yeah, I guess agreeing or disagreeing on certain areas. So if you can really go through each area of the criteria and say I gave a four out of six for Tim's focus and method because I thought this section was blah, 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 but I actually thought that he was quite weak in terms of describing the actual focus and his topic was quite broad. So if you can go through each area of the criteria together with each other, you might agree, you might disagree. Um, once you've done that as a team, can you then come up with an agreed grade overall based on um, your discussions with each other? Um, you might not agree on everything and that's okay, but it's good for us to come to a consensus at the end of the day as well. Guys, if you are just looking for uh, the last thing, which is criterion E, um, the reflection, where you'll find the reflection is if you go into Manage Back, click on your student's name under Extended Essay. And then if you just go into Planning and Progress form, that's where you will find um, the reflection. So there should only be one reflection there at the moment. And Criteria E is literally just you looking at the quality of that reflection. So I hope that makes things fairly simple for you. Um, all the instructions are here on the slides. Um, and you should have someone kind of navigating that 
for you. All the links are there for you as well. Um, I'll be around to pop into some of the Google Meets and classrooms if you are on site. But uh, let's get moderating. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks, team.